We have looked at the model of the PMOS transistor and have seen that it is exactly the same as that of the NMOS transistor, but with currents and voltages reversed in polarity. Now, what now we will look at the small signal picture of the PMOS transistor. Okay. So, just to recap the large signal characteristic of the PMOS transistor is described in terms of VSG and VSD and the drain current I D is written as a function of these two voltages. Okay. I will write down only the saturation region equation here mu P C ox by 2 W by L V S G minus V T P square. This is the model we consider and just like with uh, NMOS transistor, there can be channel length modulation or dependence of uh, the drain current on V S D in the saturation region and that is denoted by an additional factor 1 plus lambda V S D. Okay. I will not draw the graph corresponding to this, but it will be the same as that in the NMOS transistor. Okay. This of course, is only in saturation region. Now, what about the incremental model of the MOS transistor for small increments or the small signal model? If we have an increment of uh, lower case V S G in this source gate voltage and a lower case V S D in the source drain voltage, there will be a certain current increment I D in the drain current. Okay. The incremental model or the small signal model describes the relationship between these incremental quantities lower case i d v s g and v s d. Okay. Now, we know that for a general nonlinearity, if some current let us say i 2 is a function of two voltages v 1 and v 2, then i 2 plus increment in i 2 will of course, be the same function of v 1 plus an increment in v 1 and V 2 plus the increment in V 2. Okay. Now, what was the relationship between the incremental quantities? We saw that I 2 would be the partial derivative of upper case I 2 with respect to V 1, V 1 at the operating point times the increment in V 1 plus the partial derivative with respect to V 2 at the operating point times the increment in V 2 and exactly the same thing holds here as well. Okay. So, let us see what that uh, gives us. we have the operating point quantities V S G and V S D and I D let us say and we have the incremental quantities lower case V S G, lower case V S D and lower case I D. Okay. Now, we want to form an equivalent circuit which deals with the increments alone this is the source, this is the gate, this is the drain and similarly, I will draw the source, gate and drain here and because I g is 0, the gate current is 0 in a PMOS transistor as well, this gate terminal will be an open circuit in the incremental picture. Okay. Now, this incremental current lower case I d flows from source to drain. Okay. this is the incremental current that is shown in this picture. What is that equal to? It is the partial derivative of I d with respect to V s g at the operating point times the increment V s g plus the partial derivative of I d with respect to V s d again at the operating point times the increment V s d. Okay. So, we have V s g over here and 
V S D over there. Okay. Now let's consider these quantities one by one. We have the partial derivative with respect to V S G. I D. Again, I will do this only in saturation region, but like N MOS, you can also evaluate it in the tryout region and so on. mu p c ox by 2 w by l v s g minus v t p square 1 plus lambda v s d. Partial derivative with respect to v s g is mu p c ox w by l v s g minus v t p times 1 plus lambda v s d. Okay. Now, this is the usual expression for g m and many times we even approximate it by just this part because lambda is small. This is the same thing that we did for the n MOS case. Okay. Usually, for most operating point calculations, we just ignore lambda. Okay. Okay. And this is nothing but the g m of the MOS transistor and you can see that the expression is the same as before except instead of V G S we have V S G that is because all polarities in the P MOS transistor are reversed. Okay. And if you have both N MOS and P MOS transistors you could distinguish this by saying G M P or using some other extra subscript. Okay. So, we have G M and this simply says that I D will be G m times V s g and of course, the G m is calculated at the operating point that is the value of V s g that you use here and V s d that you use there will be at the operating point. Okay. Plus this part here and that again let me copy this over, over there. partial derivative with respect to V s d will be mu p c ox by 2 w by l V s g minus V t p square times lambda. Okay. And this approximately equals the operating point current. So, this is approximately lambda times I d and this is the expression that is used most often to calculate this. I know what this is, this is the output conductance G D S of the MOS transistor. Okay. So, the expression comes out very similar to what we had in case of uh, except that instead of V G S and V D S we have we have V S G and V S D. Okay. I D flows from uh, source to drain and it depends on this V S G. So, this term here is represented by a current source which is G M calculated at the operating point times V S G. And to represent this term, we recognize that I D flows from source to drain and it is also dependent on the voltage between source and drain. Okay. So, it is a conductance. This is the G D S calculated at the operating point. It is a conductance whose value is G D S. Okay. So, it looks like the incremental picture of the P MOS transistor is similar to that of N MOS transistor, but with the polarities reversed. Okay. But we will make some uh, change to this that is the following. Let me copy this over. Now, in case of the NMOS transistor, the model was in terms of V G S and V D S and the picture looked like this. This is the source, this is the gate, this is the drain. This is G D S, this is G M times V G S. 
Okay, whereas this is the model for the BMOS transistor. It is written in terms of VSD and VSD, and the incremental current source points from source to drain instead of from drain to source. Okay. Now let's say that we represent this also in terms of VGS and VDS. That we can do, right? Because VSD is minus VGS and VSD is minus VDS. If I do that, what do I get? Let me still write the source here, get there and the drain there. Now, I will use VGS as the variable instead of VSG. All I have to do is recognize that this current source is GM times VSG. Okay. This current source here is GM times VSG, which of course is minus GM times VGS, because VGS is simply minus VSG. Okay. And I'll also use VDS. As far as the conductance is concerned, the picture remains exactly the same. There is a conductance between drain and source. Okay. Obviously, this does not depend on whether you choose V S D or V D S. Okay. Because, if you choose V S D, then you will say that V S D times G D S will be flowing in that direction. Alternatively, if you choose V D S as the variable, which would be in the opposite polarity, V D S times G D S would be flowing in that direction, which is exactly the same. Okay, you can see that V S D times G D S flowing downwards is exactly the same as V D S times G D S flowing upwards. Okay, so there is no change there. Now this current source here is flowing from source to drain, and it has a value minus G M V G S, and I can get rid of the minus sign by reversing the direction of the current source. I can make it flow from uh, drain to source, in which case its value will simply be G M at the operating point times V G S. Okay. Now, why did I do all this? If you do this, you will see that the incremental picture of the PMOS transistor and the NMOS transistor are exactly the same. It is now drawn in a weird way, but you see that you have gate source voltage defined from gate to source, the same as here. You have this incremental current source going from drain to source, the same as here, and its value, of course, is GM times VGS, the same as here, and you have a conductance between drain and source. So incrementally, when you express everything in terms of VGS and VDS, the pictures of the NMOS and PMOS transistors are exactly the same. Okay. So we will draw the picture this way for the PMOS transistor as well. All I did was, I started off with VSD and VSD, which was the variables we originally used to describe the PMOS transistor, and I changed them to VGS and VDS. Okay. With that change, you see that the incremental picture of uh, the PMOS and NMOS are exactly the same. Now, this is actually a big advantage, because when we try to synthesize the function of any circuit, we do it in the small signal domain that is when we realize the control sources and so on right we did it in the incremental domain or the small signal domain first and then we added the operating point arrangement to it okay now if the small signal picture of the pmos and nmos are exactly the same whatever picture we use for nmos can be used for pmos okay so whatever we uh, derived as the incremental picture for all the four control sources or even the common source amplifier can be used as it is because we will still describe the incremental picture of the pmos like this right in terms of vgs and vds whereas only for the large signal or the operating point picture we will use vsd and vsg okay so that is one thing whatever work we did with nmos transistor can be used with pmos transistor also, when you have a circuit with multiple transistors, you can first synthesize the circuit functionality in the small signal domain without worrying about whether you are going to use NMOS transistor or PMOS transistor in a given place. Okay? So, you have many transistors or even a single transistor. You can first synthesize the function and later decide which one to use, PMOS or NMOS. That may be based on some other uh, 
criterion some measure of uh, convenience or uh, performance okay so all the synthesis of functionality is done in the incremental domain with a model of the mos transistor which uses vgs and vds this is so that you can later decide whether to use nmos or pmos and this model is equally applicable to both okay so the bottom line is that the incremental small signal models of uh, pmos and nmos are the same and it's this and it's usually also drawn like this okay at least whenever possible with vgs gm vgs and a conductance gds between drain and source and in case you are still wondering how nmos and pmos uh, came out to have the same uh, incremental model we can also go back to the large signal picture this is for nmos and we describe it in terms of vgs and vds the current flows from drain to source and then pmos on the other hand the current which is defined as flowing from source to drain is described in terms of vsg and vsd okay now let me just illustrate this uh, by considering an increment in this voltage vgs okay so let's say i have a positive increment in vgs so this means that id increases so there is a positive increment delta id that is a positive increment delta id flowing from drain to source okay now here i have the voltage as vsg and i'll consider a positive increment of delta in vgs okay so this obviously means a negative increment of delta in vsg okay so we have vsg minus delta if the value of vsg reduces the current flowing from source to drain reduces okay and you can equally well think of it as an increment in this direction delta id from drain to source and you can see it's exactly the same so a positive increment delta in vgs will cause an increment delta id from drain to source where delta id is positive similarly a positive increment of delta in vgs which is the same as negative increment of delta in vsg will cause the drain current to reduce but this drain current is flowing from source to drain so you can think of it as a positive increment from drain to source so the incremental pictures are exactly the same for pmos and nmos okay